Hey everybody, it's your girl Tanya. Thank you for tuning in to another chapter of Books and Brown Liquor hosted by me. Anyway, this video is my book review of Best Day Ever by Kyra Ruda. <sighs> wow. Okay. I was not expecting none of this. I enjoyed this book thoroughly. Thoroughly enjoyed this book from beginning to end because the way the book starts out and then the way it ends, you're just like, wow. Okay, so anyway, let me let me get to it. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. Okay, so the best day ever. Yay! This takes place in Ohio. It is a suburban couple, and uh, the, they're like the good old fashioned nuclear family. We got a husband who goes to work and pays all the bills. We got a stay-at-home mom who left her career so she could be a full-time mom. Ah, how fulfilling. Ah, basically, they're missing the dog and like the picket fence. They've got the perfect nuclear family on paper, outside looking in. And the book starts out where husband and wife, they are leaving for a weekend so they can start the best day ever. It's supposed to be a romantic weekend, just the two of them. They leave the kids behind with the babysitter so they can spend quality time together. It's gonna be the best day ever. Okay, you get it, whatever. It's supposed to be this wonderful romantic evening where they go to their vacation house a few hours away and uh, spend some quality time together. So the entire book is written from the narrative of this husband. And the book starts out and he sounds like your typical husband, middle-aged, decent shape, well-paying job. And he's in the car waiting for the wife to go. And you see, at first you smell, huh, is everything good here? But then you're like, yeah, everything's fine. His wife is, uh, she's beautiful. She's skinny, she's petite, like everything. Basically perfect arm candy, if you will. As the story progresses, you can see that tensions are kind of building slowly. And so you're kind of reading it like, is this going where I think it's going? I don't know, let's continue. So as the book goes on, the story, the pacing is really good, right? The pacing is good. And as the plot thickens and different revelations come forward, it's really enjoyable the way she maps out this book. So anyway, like I said, they go on their uh, road trip and uh, you find out that this wonderful middle-aged husband and father of two has definitely got some skeletons in his closet. And the more and more you read the book, he becomes harder and harder to like. You begin to understand the true character of this man. And you get to the point where, I know it's a fictional book, but in my mind, you just wanna kick him in the teeth. You understand? Because basically he's an old fashioned guy. You know, he lives his life where what she don't know won't hurt her. And um, okay, put it like this. He mentally is stuck in, I believe 1952. And uh, as their road trip progresses, discussions emerge about how she wants to implement some changes in their life and in their marriage. She's capable of more than just taking care of kids and cleaning a house and making a pot roast. And um, he refuses to leave 1952. And wifey is like, overit.com. Like, that's what it is. So um, he refuses to leave 1952. And... Um, She's over it. There's a lot of that going around in the uh, atmosphere lately too. These men are somehow wanting us to revert back to 1955, but it's just not happening. Get over it. So anyway, we get to the cottage and some things transpire. I cannot say because it would be too much. Some things transpire. We find out at that point what's really going on. <sighs> Damn, it's hard to say it without saying it. Uh, but we find out what's really going on. There's cracks all up in this marriage. There's cracks all up in this picture-perfect American dream, cookie cutter, all that good shit. It's broken. Okay. Ooh. I'm sorry. I'm trying so hard. 
<laughs> I'm trying so hard, but it's a really good book. The way all the revelations come out. By the end of the book, you'll understand everything that's going on. And what I can say about the title is it is the best day ever for more reasons than one. <sighs> okay, there, I did it without spoiling anything. Uh, but it is definitely the best day ever. For sure. That's for sure. So what I really enjoy about this book is this writer's writing style. A lot of times when you have like a domestic thriller, if you will, we always know it's the husband. It's always the freaking husband. But in this book, there is a... I don't want to say plot twist, but the way the revelations come forward, it's like, oh, it's like, damn. She does a good job of creating that surprise factor, if you will. Not like Frida McFadden, where you're like bashed over the head and you have a fucking whiplash after it, but like, it just slowly comes to form and uh, it's really good. I enjoyed this book very much. I think I'm going to read another book by this author called um, The Favorite Daughter. I think I started it, but yeah, I did start it, but I'll pick that as some I'll pick that back up at some point. But anyway, Best Day Ever by Kyra Ruda. Narcissistic husband and a wife who's like, eh, time to make some changes here. That's all I can say without saying too much. This book was wonderful. Good writing, good pacing, believable characters. Uh I don't know what number I'm going to give this because I always give everything a four. So I just, I liked it. I recommend this book. This is not an author that I hear a lot of people talk about. So I need you to know, Kyra Ruda. Yes. Okay. If you see a book written by Kyra Ruda, pick it up. It's good. So I recommend this. I enjoyed it. And that's my two cents. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you good reading. Bye.